Hello again, friends, and welcome back to Suzanne Elizabeth's Kitchen. It's Friday, which for me means that I'm usually going to have either steak or deep dish pizza for dinner. Today I'm going to have steak, which means I need to get my um, pizza dough ready now so that it has a couple hours to rise. And um, so I thought I would just show you what I do to make a deep dish pizza, and it's a, probably a little bit different than what you see um, in other recipes. So to begin with, I'm gonna show you what we've got here. I have um, three cups of flour, two cups of uh, self-rising flour, and one cup of just a regular all-purpose flour. Now I do this because I find that I like the, the texture that you get with a self-rising flour. It makes the pizza crust or pizza dough fluffier, which really works for a, um, a deep dish pizza. Now, there, like I said, there's three cu cups total, and if you wanted to, you could um, make one very large. In fact, let me just grab my, um, to give you an idea of how large the pan that I use for my deep dish pizza is, because you could probably get two pizzas out of this. So you can see it's quite large. Um, I'm guessing it's probably 12 inches, 12 inches across, so it's very large. That's why I use three, three cups of flour. You could use two cups if you have a smaller amount, uh, I mean a smaller dish, just use one cup of all-purpose and one self-rising. All right, so there we go. I've got, and I'm going to do this, I'm going to try something new, because you know how I love to take shortcuts using my trusty food processor. By the way, this food processor is 20 years old. So, um, you know, it pays to spend a little bit of money on your appliances and on your pots and pans because, actually I'm going to move this back over here, because they'll, they'll last forever, you know, if you take decent care of them. So three cups of flour, two of all purpose, and um, one cup of all I mean, two of self-rising, one of all-purpose. And the reason I'm looking confused is because I'm looking for my little quarter cup measure. And this quarter cup measure is I'm going to use to add a quarter cup of just yellow cornmeal. The reason for that, there is a method behind my madness, is because I want to add, I love the texture that you get with a cornmeal um, in, on the pizza dough. And a lot of times people will just um, put the dough out onto cornmeal and roll it, and then that incorporates it. And we'll probably do that when we get to rolling this out. But in the interim, I like to incorporate it. Now, just, mm, that's probably two tablespoons of butter. And if I can do this without using my teeth like I did last time, one tablespoon of olive oil. And the purpose of this is we want to incorporate some fat into our dough because it's going to give it a lovely flavor. Then I'm going to put one teaspoon, yep, that's a teaspoon. Um, as you know, I'm notoriously blind and I'm trying to do this demonstration without my glasses, which is really interesting because, like I said, I'm blind, um, and a teaspoon of sugar, and then two teaspoons of yeast, and I'll show you, here's my, you know, you can buy the packets of yeast, and as you can see, I've got this monstrous bag of yeast that I got at Costco, which I think it makes sense, of course, it's now all over the counter. But um, I think it makes sense to buy something like that if you bake a lot, which, as you know, I do bake a lot. So two, well, let's say two and a quarter teaspoons of dried yeast, which is exactly what you get in one of those um, packets of Fleischmann's yeast. So I'm just putting the same amount in. So now we're going to put this on, put the top on, and give it just a quick little burst so that we can incorporate the the flour, the butter, the yeast, the salt, and the sugar. Okay. Woo! As you can 
see I have flour flying all over. One thing I should tell you is that because this is an older um, food processor, the edges here are probably because it's been in the dishwasher so many times. It's The edges are not as tight as they should be. And so, um, you know, it makes a mess. Which, as you know, if you've watched this program, I really don't care because um, I'm a messy cook. I accept that about myself and I clean up after myself. So, you know, tough luck. This is my kitchen. Um, also, as you know, I make aprons and I have to do my obligatory commercial. Here's my latest apron. This is a very lovely cabbage rose apron. Very, I like to say it's very 80s, but um, you know, for those of you who are younger than I am, you'll think this is something completely new. Anyways, cabbage rose on a canvas available at SuzanneElizabeths.com. That's also where my blog is now and recipes. All the recipes you'd want to find. Okay, I'm turning this on and I just want to add water and, you know, let's say there's a cup in here. I just want to add enough water until it comes together in a ball, which it's doing right now. And that's it. Stop. So, I would say you're going to have between, yeah, that's maybe just a touch more. Um, between about two-thirds of a cup. And there you go. Let me show you what this looks like so you can see now. Let me unplug this. And you can see I've got a nice dough here. It's kind of wet, um, but not you know, dripping wet, because obviously we don't want that. And then we're just going to take this, and I probably should grab some cornmeal and just tap that like that. And I'm just going to put it back into the bowl that it was in before. And let's see if I can get the rest of this dough out. And then I'm going to cover it with the, um, a lid or some plastic wrap, whatever you've got. There we go. And we're just going to let it rest and rise for two hours. And then once it is, once it's all, once it's done that, and you do want to keep your bowl covered. And the reason for that, very simply, is that um, you don't want your dough to dry out. That's all. No magic. Just you don't want your dough to dry out. So there. That's all. We're going to leave it alone. I, like I said, I put cornmeal around it. You could also put... Um, some regular flour or some even drizzle it with olive oil again the reason is we we just you know I put cornmeal so it wouldn't stick to my hands and then I'm just covering it with this that's all nothing exciting I'm gonna let it rest for two hours and then um, I'm gonna stretch it out and um, let it rise again and then we're gonna put it in here and off we go. Fill this with um, my cheese. And today I'm going to be making broccoli rabe pizza. So mozzarella, broccoli rabe, garlic, lots of garlic. And we're going to bake it. And it'll bake for about... Uh, it will bake probably for about 30 minutes at 350 degrees. So that's all we wrote for today. A quick... Uh, a quick pizza dough that you will absolutely love. So see you again at Suzanne Elizabeth's Kitchen. In the meantime, God bless you. Uh, please enjoy cooking with your family and friends. Goodbye.